Donald Trump left court after day two of his criminal trial, looking like an absolutely defeated person. Donald Trump walked over to the press after the court proceedings concluded and told the press that he would be going to a bodega, he said. Here, play this clip. Going to a bodega. You know about that, right? In that same interview as Donald Trump left the courtroom after day two of trial, Donald Trump also complained about the speed of jury selection and how Justice Mershon was moving things along rather expeditiously and stopping all of Donald Trump's efforts to try to delay or obstruct the criminal trial. Play this clip. We're having a hard time with the New York state system. It's under watch by the whole world and uh, it's not looking very good. So we, we think we have a very conflicted, highly conflicted judge who shouldn't be on the case, and he's rushing this trial, and he's doing as much as he can for the Democrats. This is a Biden-inspired witch hunt, and it should end, and it should end very quickly. Thank you very much. Are you going on a jury? Indeed, in day two, there was seven jurors who were selected, including a four-person during the voir dire. Uh, Donald Trump continued to fall asleep on day two. Uh, the sketch artists are having a field day with this. Here's a sketch artist photograph of Donald Trump sleeping. Here's another one. Here's just another uh, courtroom sketch of Donald Trump. You see him uh, right there. Uh, earlier in the day, when Donald Trump arrived at the criminal trial, day two, uh, in Manhattan. Donald Trump uh, uh, spoke with the press and he further incriminated himself by basically saying that the reason that there were falsified business records were because of his lawyer and he said because of his accountant. Here, play this clip. I called a, I was, I was paying a lawyer and marked it down as a legal expense, some accountant, I didn't know, marked it down as a legal expense. That's exactly what it was. And you've been indicted over that? I should be right now in Pennsylvania, in Florida, in many other states, North Carolina, Georgia. Thereafter, Donald Trump did in fact go to a bodega uh, after uh, day two of the criminal trial. And while Donald Trump was there, uh, he was asked a number of questions, and here Donald Trump talks about how there's a lot of bodega crime taking place, a lot of crimes in the bodega. Here, play this clip. Never been a judge so conflicted. It's just it's ridiculous. And also, there's no crime. You know where the crime is? In the bodegas, where they come and rob them every week. Or okay, Donald Trump was then asked about the plan by MAGA Republicans to get rid of MAGA Mike Johnson as Speaker of the House because MAGA Mike Johnson said that he would be potentially introducing legislation to fund Ukraine. Um, and on that basis, the MAGA Republicans want him out uh, and, and think that that's somehow helping the Democrats versus just helping our allies. So Donald Trump was asked about MAGA Mike and like Tony Soprano, Donald Trump said, we'll see what happens to MAGA Mike. We'll see. Play this clip. While Donald Trump was at this bodega, I mean, by the way, how odd is it that he's at, he's at a bodega after the criminal trial saying this is where the crime is? <laughs> maybe because you're there. Maybe you bring the crime with you wherever you go. Maybe you are a, a walking crime ring right there. We thought about that anyway. Here, uh, Donald Trump is asked if he believes he violated the gag order for his threats against uh, witnesses like my co-host on political beatdown, Michael Cohen, and others, uh, other witnesses like Stormy Daniels. And Donald Trump goes, it's so unconstitutional. I should have a right to what? You should have a right to threaten witnesses and threaten the judge's daughter and to threaten the family members. No, no one has that right. Okay, that's not a, a First Amendment right for criminal defendants to threaten family members members and threaten witnesses. Um, here, play this clip. You violated the gag order. What? Do you believe you violated the gag order? No, I didn't. There shouldn't be a gag order. Let me just tell you. The gag order is totally unconstitutional. The judge should not be there. 
The judge is highly conflicted. He should not be there. Speaking of threatening witnesses and threatening family members, there was a moment during the jury selection where Donald Trump leaned forward and started making noises when one of the jurors was talking about their prior Facebook post. And it seemed to be that Donald Trump was threatening and intimidating a juror by kind of grunting and making noises at a juror. Justice Mershon was not having any of it. And Justice Mershon took control of the courtroom right away as Norm Eisen reported. The judge is hammering Trump for juror intimidation. He was acting out while the last juror was speaking. Trump's lawyer, Todd Blanche, is trying to justify it, um, but really can't justify it. And then Donald Trump like puts up his hands to the judge like, okay, I'll stop. Okay, I'll stop. Um, while all of this was taking place, Donald Trump's stock, Trump Media, was absolutely crashing, almost falling below $20 a share. People are losing so much money on that. It's what we've been warning about for a very, very long time. And it seems every day that stock crashes more and more and more. On the other hand, as Carl Quintanilla from CNBC reports, this week so far in the United States, the U.S. to grow at double the rate. The United States economy is growing at double the rate of its G7 peers this year, according to the IMF. The number of homicides and violent crime is plummeting in major U.S. cities. Where crime actually remains higher are red states and red counties and red cities. But overall, violent crime is down significantly by major percentages under President Biden. Also, the Wall Street Journal, yeah, the Wall Street Journal, a Murdoch publication, says, Envy of the world, the U.S. economy expected to keep powering higher Economists lift their growth forecasts in the latest Wall Street Journal survey. Support for today's episode comes from Hexclad. Hexclad has revolutionized the cookware industry with an all-in-one hybrid pan that gives you the convenience and cleanup of nonstick, the versatility of your grandma's cast iron, and the durability to last a lifetime. Whether you want to make that perfect steak dinner on date night or ditch that greasy pan from your college apartment, Hexclad has you covered. Even the great Gordon Ramsay, known to many as a bit of a critic, only trusts Hexclad pots and pans in both his home and in all of his Michelin star restaurants. And for a limited time, Hexclad is giving our listeners 10% off your order with our exclusive link. Just go to hexclad.com slash Midas. Support our show and check them out at hexclad.com forward slash M-E-I-D-A-S. You know that I am the resident chef here at Midas Touch, and ever since I got my Hexclad pans, I cannot go back to using anything else. I've been cooking the best omelets on my Hexclad in the morning, searing meats and veggies on it for dinner, and it is always pure perfection. Hexclad's six-piece set is the perfect starter bundle to enjoy the incredible versatility of their products. The set features three of their most popular pans with an accompanying lid that can handle all of your pan cooking needs whether it's eggs, burgers, steaks, or sauces, your kitchen will never be the same. Usually when selecting pans, you must choose between the performance of stainless steel, the durability of cast iron, and the convenience of non-stick. But with Hexclad, you could have it all. Hexclad's hybrid technology gives you the benefits of all three in only one pan. Hexclad's patented laser-etched hexagonal steel ridges boost your searing power. Hexclad truly checks every single box when it comes to picking your cookware. They are metal utensil safe, dishwasher safe, and oven safe up to 500 degrees. They are induction ready and even have a stay cool handle so you could saute with ease. Hexclad has a lifetime warranty. These are literally the last set of pots and pans you will ever have to buy. For all of my cooks out there, Hexclad has to be at the top of your holiday wish list this year. Trust me when I say your partner, your family, and all dinner guests will thank you. So chef, now is the time to upgrade that kitchen. For a limited time, only our listeners get 10% off your order with our exclusive link. Just head to hexclad.com slash Midas. Support our show and check them out at hexclad.com forward slash Midas. That's M-E-I-D-A-S. Bon appetit. Let's eat with Hexclad's revolutionary cookware. 
Speaking about surveys and polls, President Biden has all of the momentum right now. Um, in a new echelon uh, poll that previously had Donald Trump uh, winning, um, 49 to 47, President Biden, the latest echelon poll, is up 49 to 46, taking a three-point lead in the national averages. President Biden's up. You know I don't like talking about polls. I really don't like talking about polls at all. But with all of the disinformation out there by the right wing who tried to game these polls to act like Donald Trump is strong, I think it is important that I push back on any false narratives that Donald Trump is leading. He's not leading, but let's not get complacent folks at all. Also, you now have uh, Fox that is complaining that which Fox used to always talk about the polls, which they don't talk about anymore because Donald Trump is down. But now Fox is complaining that on other networks like MSNBC and others, they're talking about the polls. Here, play this clip. Really not been able to catch up. They're looking into the wind of Joe Biden now beating Trump in the majority of the national polls. Trend lines are all breaking Joe Biden's way. We'll be fine. Dare we call it joe Mentum? We probably shouldn't know. God, are they insufferable now? One of the major reasons Donald Trump is down is that President Biden has massive leads over Donald Trump among women. Here, play this clip. It's also showing that Biden, President Biden has a 16 point lead over Donald Trump among women. That's a gender gap, a growing gender gap. President Biden, on the other hand, was in Scranton, Pennsylvania, giving a great speech there. I'd love to show for you some of the highlights. So you can just see the comparison. Donald Trump, I'm going to a bodega and it's so unfair. Everything's so unfair. All he does is whine. Here uh, is President Biden in Scranton. This is uh, a part of his speech that I loved here. Let's play this clip. You know, I've already been delivering real results in a fiscally responsible way. But I know not everyone's feeling it. Just the other day, a defeated looking guy came up to me and asked if I could help. He was drowning in debt. I said, I'm sorry, Donald, but I can't help you. <laughs> That's what I can do. Here's President Biden trolling Donald Trump yet again. Play this clip. You know, I have to say, if Trump's stock in the true social his, his company, drops me lower, he might do better under my tax plan than his. <laughs> Possibly. And then President Biden, though, is talking about the issues. You know, he's talking about protecting seniors. He's talking about protecting Medicare. He's talking about protecting Social Security. He's talking about making sure the billionaires and the decamillionaires pay their fair share. Here, play this clip. Well... Trump recently said Social Security and Medicare, quote, here's his quote, there's a lot you can do in terms of cutting, end of quote. Well, right on cue, the MAGA Republicans in Congress released their budget, which hasn't gotten nearly enough attention. The budget they propose for next year would raise the retirement age in Social Security and would slash Medicare. Think about that for a second. MAGA Republicans want billionaires to pay less in taxes, want seniors to work longer before they can retire on Social Security benefits, and they want to cut Medicare. I got a better idea. Let's protect Social Security and Medicare and make the very wealthy begin to pay their fair share. And folks, that's all I'm looking for. Uh, call me pretty simple, right? I just want normalcy. I want pro-democracy. I don't want chaos. I want politicians to talk about the issues. Even if I disagree with them, I want them focused on issues and I want people uh, uh, who, are, who are just decent human beings, who are normal. And I just think that contrast is becoming more and more clear every single day. And look, I just wanna highlight the contrast. You're free to make whatever decisions you, know, you, you wanna make. Uh, just for me, I just think it's important that we all have the same accurate data set. And that's what I'm proud to show you there. So another horrible day for Donald Trump. Day two, seven jurors selected, the four persons selected. Things are moving. Donald Trump is freaking out about it. We'll keep you posted every, every step of the way here. There's no court today on Wednesday. Court will resume on uh, Thursday. And I think we'll have a full jury selected maybe as early as Thursday. 
Um, but I think we'll have one by the end of the week. I hope you're enjoying our updates that I do with Karen Friedman Agnifilo as well. Hope you're enjoying them. Hit subscribe. Let's get to 3 million together. Enough! Send it to the big house, not the White House. Get the new exclusive tees, mugs, and stickers right now at store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.